Today we arrive at the fourth and final gospel, the gospel according to John, written by the Apostle John who refers to himself only as the disciple whom Jesus loved, written between A.D. 80 and 90. John also is the author of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and Revelations found at the end of the New Testament books. John was a disciple of Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry and his focus on his accounts in the book of John concerning Jesus focus on the deity of Christ. Beginning in chapter 1, he begins showing that Jesus is God in the flesh. Today, I want to focus on just three simple words from the book of John. It is finished. John 19.30 Yesterday, we talked about nothing being impossible for God and that as sinners, it was impossible for us to reach God or make ourselves acceptable to Him and that Jesus Christ has made a way for us to God through Himself. You know, when we see a cross today, and they are everywhere, we immediately think of Jesus. Why? Because it was on a Roman cross that Jesus died and bore the sins of the world. Many people wear crosses around their neck and never really knowing what it means or represents. It just looks cool and it's widely accepted and viewed as a positive uh, thing uh, around the world. But the cross was a symbol of torture, a brutal way of execution at the time of Jesus. Certainly something you wouldn't see around the necks of people during his day. It would be kind of like people today wearing an image of an electric chair around our necks. Uh, not really that appealing. But Christ's death would forever change the meaning of the cross. This symbol of death now had become a symbol of life and hope to all of mankind. When Jesus was on the cross, he was dying as a sacrifice or payment for the sins of the world. All of the Old Testament sacrificial systems pointed to this moment in history where Jesus became the lamb slain for our sins. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to be baptized, he said in John 1.29, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This was the purpose for which Jesus came to the earth, to take away our sins. When we take communion and drink the cup, it represents the blood of Jesus shed for us on the cross. Luke 22.20 Jesus said in John 6.54, Whoever drinks my blood has eternal life, which upset many of his followers, and they turned away from following him. Romans 5.9 tells us that we are justified or made right with God by his blood. Ephesians 1.7 says, In him, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the richness of his grace. When Jesus said these three words, It is finished. Our sins were paid in full. Nothing was left undone. All of my sin, all of your sin, was placed on the Lamb, Jesus, and His blood was payment to God on our behalf. In the law, a priest had to go once a year to offer a sacrifice for sins. Year after year, this had to be done. But Christ died once for all sin. In Hebrews, the writer explains how all of these sacrifices in the Old Testament were a shadow. And in chapter 9, he says, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the great and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all. And he says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God? How much more than that of the, the bulls and the lambs? But well, Jesus said it is finished. God accepted the perfect holy sacrifice of his own son and poured out his wrath on him, the wrath that you and I deserve. Colossians 1.20 says, And by him, Jesus, to reconcile all things to himself. He says, Having made peace through the blood of the cross. Verse 21, And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through his death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Folks, that's the good news. It is finished. Jesus has paid the price. Just like we talked yesterday of the impossible. He has done the impossible. We could never present ourselves holy and blameless in the sight of God. Jesus has done that for us. He is the only way to God. And he offers salvation to whosoever will come to him. My prayer today is that you will come to Jesus, the Lamb of God. He paid for your sins. He paid for my sins. He stands ready to forgive you. Won't you invite him into your heart today? And if you know Jesus, won't you tell somebody?
Won't you tell somebody that He is the only way to God and that He stands ready to forgive you of your sins. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Soarbox as we continue 66 books in 66 days.